I built an LED wall. What you see behind me is an altitude LED wall consisting of the apex panel. This LED wall is 10 feet high by about 20 feet wide. The pixel pitch on the LED wall is 2.9 millimeters. In this video, I want to walk you through our entire LED system here at South Fellowship Church and just show you how simple this is to assemble an LED wall yourself. I'll show you what it looks like behind the wall with the ground support and all the power and data connections. I'll show you what processor we're using and then we'll go back in the tech booth to talk about the video system and how we're getting content to the LED wall. So without further ado, let's dive in. And by the way, the incredible visuals that you're seeing on the wall behind me, they're available at sundayscreens.com. Uh, Ezra, the creator of Sunday Screens, is just off camera here cycling through the content for this dope YouTube video. So if you're getting an altitude LED wall, also definitely check out sundayscreens.com. So let's head on behind the wall and you guys can check out how this thing is constructed. So this is called a ground support system. And Aaron, the worship pastor here at South Fellowship and I, were able to assemble this entire system within a couple days. And I'll play back some of the footage for you to see what this process looks like. And on the Altitude LED channel, I'll probably have more in-depth assembly videos coming later on this year. But I was really just impressed at the simplicity of, of how this is built. And it's a really rugged structure. When you get the wall, uh, you get the, the panels themselves and those just kind of stack on top of one another and they latch together nice and tight. And then you build this simple ground support system with the floor bases that are down here on the ground. And then you've got the vertical uh, kind of truss mechanisms and the support crossbars here. And it, it's a very lightweight, uh, structure, but when you bolt everything together, it just, it really is solid uh, as it's supporting and holding up the wall. A really important thing with ground support is to have uh, these counterweights here, the, the sandbags. So I got the quick creek tube sand at our local Home Depot, and it needs about two sandbags uh, per ground support base here. So that was probably the hardest part about this setup, which is going to Home Depot and getting these heavy sandbags and lugging them in here. Uh, but Aaron was a champ. Uh, I got him in the truck at Home Depot, and then Aaron like unloaded these by himself pretty much when I got here. An LED wall is simple in that it needs power and it needs data. So the power, let's talk about that first. You want to uh, consider how many circuits you're gonna need for your LED wall. I'm not an expert electrician. Fortunately, the members of the Altitude team who help with the design uh, process, they're the experts that you can kind of lean on to consult you on how uh, many circuits you might need uh, to have installed in your breaker, for your stage, at your church, wherever it is, right? And that's as simple as just running the calculation of how much power is being drawn by all the panels that you have and doing the math to figure out how many amps is that requiring, how many circuits uh, does that mean? So in our case, I think we added about four additional circuits to ensure that you know we're not gonna you know, blow any circuits or anything like that or draw too much power. We had an electrician to come uh, take care of that process. And then you, you simply have on each end of these rows of panels here, there's six rows stacked on top of one another and power goes in to the end of each row going you know, up and down here along the wall. And then all the power is just daisy chained uh, for each row across the different panels. So up on the wall here, we've got power out and we've got power in. So that just daisy chains them all. It keeps the cabling really simple. So these are the apex panels. You'll see these are the power supply uh, and data boxes right here. You know, these are the actual LED modules. I could, you know, if I wanted to, I could like push out, push this out and pop it out if I need to replace and service them. Second thing the wall needs is data. So the data is gonna come from the processor, which is this guy. This is a Novastar VX600. And this processor takes an SDI input from our video switcher from the tech booth that runs all the way up here to stage. And then we've got six 
ethernet data outputs coming out of the processor to the six rows of panels um, that we have for this LED wall. And configuring the processor is fairly straightforward. You get a PC laptop connected over USB to kind of configure some of the settings. It also has some quick buttons to switch between inputs on the front. Once this is configured, you really aren't having to, to do a whole lot you know, on a week to week basis. You just turn it on and it's, it's ready to go. You just wanna make sure that it's getting video input on the back of the processor. Ideally, we're gonna get this video processor rack mounted. Right now, it's just sitting on this old laptop stand that I had laying, lying around. Um, but we're gonna rack mount it. And then also, we're going to consolidate the power switch for the whole wall into one convenient location. Right now, we do need to unplug the power cables from the individual outlets around the room. It's totally a fine solution, you know, as you first get your panels up and running. Uh, but eventually, it'd be nice to have a convenient, you know, switch that switches all those circuits uh, simultaneously. So that's the construction of the LED wall. Like I said, go subscribe to the Altitude LED channel where we're gonna be covering more of these different options and ways that you can construct your LED wall and we'll come out with more uh, instructional content on, on how to do it yourself. Um, but it is really easy and that's what kind of blew my mind in this process uh, when uh, Craig from Altitude LED like left uh, the LED panels with us after church front conference. He had him in a trailer out back and he's like, oh, you guys should demo this at South Fellowship Church. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, oh, you, you can construct it yourself. And I was kind of surprised by that, but it went really smoothly. So let's go check out the tech booth and how we're actually sending content to the LED wall. So let's kind of work our way backwards, starting from the LED wall and the processor, which you just saw. We have an SDI cable that runs all the way back here to our video switcher, which is the A10 Constellation 2ME. This functions as both our switcher for both or for two different MEs, one ME for live stream, one ME for screens in the room, but it also has the capability to function as our video hub. So once a video signal gets to the switcher and we have that run going to the LED wall, we can pretty much output any video signal uh, source that we have to that wall, whether it's ProPresenter on machine one or our second instance of ProPresenter, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it could be a camera feed that we wanna put on that LED wall. I actually already used it for like iMag on Baptism Sunday. That was kind of cool. This is really important to think about a video switching setup and video routing when you're getting up and running with an LED wall and doing it in a way that's really flexible. Let's go to the computer workstations. So this is our primary computer graphics workstation with ProPresenter running on it for lyrics and motion backgrounds and pretty much any content we're gonna be throwing, especially on our side screens, which are still projectors. Hopefully someday we can upgrade to LED walls with those. And there's an important tool that we're using to get content from this ProPresenter machine to our video switcher. That's the DeckLink Duo. It gives us uh, four SDI outputs over Thunderbolt so that we have four different screens screens that we can send content out to our video switcher. So one way we can send content to our center screen, the LED wall, is we can you know, create a new screen within ProPresenter that's dedicated to that LED wall. We can designate that screen to output to one of the outputs on our DeckLink Duo, and that goes to the video switcher, which then goes to the processor, then to the LED wall, right? So that's one way we can do it. It's a bit limiting, so we actually don't use that method uh, very often. Um, and it's a little bit limiting in terms of if we wanna have different content on the center screen versus our side screens. Um, so what we did instead is we actually have another computer that's set up, and it's been set up like this when we had a widescreen uh, projector set up here in the center. We have another computer running ProPresenter that's outputting a separate screen, and it just gives us way more flexibility for how we're bringing the content in. So let me show you that. So over here is our second instance of ProPresenter, and this is using the Ultra Studio mini monitor. It goes from Thunderbolt to SDI to the uh, video switcher. And here we have just more control, like a whole uh, separate instance of ProPresenter on what content we want to throw to that center screen. And one thing that we're actually doing here that's kind of a cool trick is we are outputting uh, a separate NDI screen from the first instance of ProPresenter into um, a video input on this instance of ProPresenter. So we can have, you know, functionally some basic mirroring if we want coming from this machine by selecting the slide that has that NDI input coming in, or we can set up 
different content slides here um, that are then gonna go to the, the LED wall. I'm making a more in-depth video on these ProPresenter configurations on the Altitude LED channel, so just go subscribe there, watch the videos there as they'll be live soon. But those are kind of the two options. It's like, okay, we want a simple output from machine one, we've got that ready to go. But if we want more creative capability to have more independent content on that center screen on the LED wall, we've got another instance of ProPresenter right here. What's cool is with ProPresenter, with MIDI automation, with NDI, you can get ProPresenter on different machines talking to each other very easily. Let's talk about maintaining the screen. Uh, to keep it clean, to remove dust, you can just use a light microfiber cloth to just gently kind of wipe off any dust of the surface of it. And then and whenever, you know, if you have a pixel go out, which it's, it's gonna happen eventually, these pixels do not necessarily last forever, but you have these small LED modules that from the front, um, you can actually just put this vacuum tool on it. And then you pull it right off because it's just magnetic in how it's attached to the wall. So then what you would do, let's say this one had uh, some missing pixels in it, it, it doesn't. Uh, but what I can do is I can swap it out for one of the brand new modules that comes with the LED system. All of them get shipped with extra modules so that you can instantly uh, replace ones that need to be replaced. And then since it's covered under warranty, you just ship us any modules that need pixel uh, repair. And then we're gonna go ahead and repair those for you at Altitude LED, all covered under the warranty and ship them back to you. So then you always have a fresh stock of modules to replace when you need it. So then when you need to put the module back, you can just use the vacuum again and just put it right in there. Just kind of gently press it into place and now I can't even see where the module is anymore looking at the panel. So very easy maintenance and support. You don't have to be some super duper tech guy, genius or whatever. If you're a worship leader, a pastor, any church staff member can manage doing that. And this vacuum tool, of course, is very simple to use. So that is our new Altitude LED system. And I will say when you get an LED wall for the first time, you really do have to start thinking differently about your content strategy when it comes to worship visuals because you can you know throw just about anything up there but you want to be intentional to not just throw any old motion background up there or uh, nature footage or things like that just you want to make sure you don't like throw your congregation uh, for a loop or make them feel like nauseous and stuff because this is a really powerful tool and you just need to be uh, very careful and thoughtful to how you steward it. So I'm actually pumped. I've spent some time, quite a bit of time with Ezra Cohen from Sunday Screens and you can see their content behind me. It just looks beautiful because the LED wall can really just set the environment of your stage. It's, it's, a, it's both a, a content playback tool, but it's also this like environmental art piece or set design piece. Sometimes, some days it can be one of those things more than the other, it really depends on the, the context and the demand that you need from it. Here at South Fellowship Church, we're in beautiful Colorado where everybody loves the mountains and nature and being outside. So in a lot of our live streams here at South Fellowship, when you see this wall in action on Sunday, a lot of the times Aaron, our worship pastor, will curate it with a lot of just amazing uh, high definition footage that looks awesome. The congregation uh, loves it. That's one common way that we've uh, been using the LED wall to kind of set the scene in worship. Uh, another way is we have used AI image generation. You could check out the cool video we made on the Altitude LED channel where we talk about using AI for church stage design, where a wall like this, you can just put even a stationary image. It just looks, looks incredible. Um, I am excited about using more of this type of content that you see behind me where you can see like there's varying types of content. Some of it can have a lot of movement to it. Some of it can have some subtle motion to it. Um, this is the content created by the team at Sunday Screens. And this is the team that creates all the visuals that you've, you've probably seen, you know, in the major uh, worship band tours out there, whether it's like Carrie Job and Cody Carnes or some of the stuff at Elevation Church or Hillside 
Hillsong Church, the, the, the same artists behind putting content on the LED walls at those churches are the ones who like make this type of content, uh, which is, in my opinion, kind of in a whole league of its own when it comes to visual content for worship. So definitely check that out. And I'm excited to learn more. Oh, man, th this one looks so cool. Go back to the orb. I just love how black it is, <laughs> like the, the dynamic range, all that negative space. Like it really feels like there's just this orange orb in the middle of our stage here. I'm excited to dive into using tools like Resolume now, which allows you to you know, alter these images kind of on the fly. And I actually made a video with Ezra Cohen on the Altitude LED channel that you can check out where we kind of give you an introduction to Resolume, but show them kind of what you can do here. You know, taking different ele different elements and then kind of like fading in different layers. Like it's, it's incredible uh, the power that it gives you. So like here's one layer of content and he's blending in kind of the, the pinkish color with it. Um, you can just do so much more like overlays and multiply effects, um, so many cool things using the building blocks that they have at, at Sunday Screens. So hopefully this video gives you a taste of what's possible with an altitude LED system. I'm really excited to be a partner in this company. Um, I'm not just like an affiliate of it. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. Like Altitude is another company that I have personal ownership in because I believe in it. I believe in the people behind it uh, and the team behind it. It's the same team members from Pro Church Lights, another company that we've had a lot of great collaborative content on here on the Church Front channel and this is a really exciting new uh, endeavor for us so go check out the altitude led youtube channel uh, subscribe to that channel for more worship visuals content and then go to altitudeled.com to reach out for a quote for an led system for your church um, these led systems they come with the five-year warranties uh, with an option to extend to a 10-year warranty and our LED wall systems, they're not gonna be the cheapest systems out there. They're also not gonna be the most expensive ones. They're gonna be kind of like right down the middle because we wanna make sure you have quality uh, LED wall components at your church so you're not constantly have to worry about fixing things all the time. And that's also why we can confidently provide such a generous warranty option with these products because they have robust build quality. And then more importantly, Altitude LED's heart is for the church. Um, and I'm excited to be a part of building out a lot of the educational uh, media for this company to support our customers, uh, to not only get the wall constructed in your space, but to help you utilize it to its fullest potential. So in case you can't tell, I'm really excited about this new venture with Altitude LED. Go check out the resources down below this video to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.